The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as priest in the divisions turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife has advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning to everybody. And I feel like I have reached the pinnacle now. When you get invited to celebrate Mass at Greenwich Catholic, you know you've made it. So it's, you know, I'm going to go home and celebrate after this. <clears throat> so we just finished reading a super long gospel passage. So I'm going to just kind of focus on one part of it, okay? But first of all, just to kind of give you the setting, because I want you guys to kind of imagine. Imagine the Jewish temple was huge. It was like enormous, like the entire size of Greenwich Catholic, huge, okay? So imagine you're in this gigantic building, okay? And they were not Catholic, they were Jewish people, they had a different kind of mass, so to speak. Um, and what happened was, all the people would be outside, and then on the altar, the holy place, was covered up with a curtain. So when the Jewish priest would go in and do his thing, he would open up the curtain, nobody would get to see him, he was alone in the holy place and he was going to do his thing with the incense and all the smoke would come out. And the smoke represented the prayers of the people of God rising up to God, rising up to heaven, okay? And that was his ceremony. And as he's doing this, he's, you know, and by the way, there was like, I think there were 10,000 Jewish priests at the time. So you basically got maybe, if you're lucky, one shot during your lifetime to do this. So it was a big deal. So finally, it's his turn. He goes in there. He's an old man. He's been, you know, serving all his life. And he's offering up incense, and boom, an angel appears. So he's like, well, that wasn't part of the plan. Where's this in the script? And the angel Gabriel comes and gives him this, this news, okay? And the news is this. It says, Zechariah, you have been praying for a child ever since you were a young man. And now you're old. And you and your wife, it's like grandma and grandpa age, and you're not supposed to be having kids anymore. 
You've prayed all this time wanting to have a child. And by this stage of your life, you've pretty much given up, okay? And the angel says to him, God has heard your prayers. And you're going to have a child. And Zechariah is like, that's nice, but you're about 30 years too late, okay? Where were you when I was praying as a young man, you know, wondering all this time, you know, Lord, please give me a child. And nobody was forthcoming. And Zechariah asks, you know, he's, the angel tells him, you're going to have a child. And furthermore, not only are you going to have a child, this is going to be an incredible child. And he goes through this whole list of things. Everyone is going to rejoice at his birth. I can assure you, when I was born, I don't think anybody besides my mom and dad rejoiced at my birth. Okay? Maybe some of you people were like, oh, a child has been born. In my case, that didn't happen. Promise you. In John the Baptist's case, it did. People were like, wow, this child is going to be great. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. He's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. It's like before he was even born, he was already baptized. Wow. And he's going to be a prophet. And he's going to, by his preaching, he's going to go out and change the country of Israel by his preaching. So imagine if any of you was born and, or conceived, and even before you're born, an angel appears to your dad and says, your child is going to be great, he's going to be holy, he's going to change all of Greenwich with his preaching. And furthermore, your dad is already like too old. It would be like, it would be a big deal. Well, this is precisely what happened. Okay? Now, I think we can ask ourselves sometimes, why does God do those things? Why does God wait? Wouldn't it have been a lot easier for him to have a child when he was like 25 or 30 years old? Why would God make this big drama when this guy's already in his 70s or whatever his age was? Well, I, I have only one example of something like that that I can think of from my own life, okay? I don't have any children, so that wasn't it. Um, but I remember when I first entered the seminary. Seminary is a place where you go to study to be a priest. I'm in a religious order, so I'm a legionary of Christ. And because we're dumber than everybody else, it takes us about twice as long. It took me like, <laughs> took me 14 years to get to the priesthood. Can you imagine that? No, it's because I did all kinds of extra steps in between. But 14 years from the time I started to the time I got ordained a priest. Um, but I remember when I was in my third year, I was living in Connecticut at the time. And I remember one time I was talking to some of the other brothers, the seminarians that I was living with. And we were talking about, you know, because we were in a young religious order and we were constantly starting in new countries and stuff. So like one brother was saying, I want to go to Eastern Europe and go to Russia. And one was saying, I want to go to Africa and start the Legion of Christ there. And, and I remember I said, I want to go to the Philippines. We didn't have any houses in Asia, so it would have been a totally new thing. And I was, you know, 22 years old, I think, at the time, 23. I said, I want to start the Legion of Christ in the Philippines. Why? I don't know. I grew up in Seattle. There are a lot of Asians there. The only Catholic country in Asia it made sense, I guess. For whatever reason, God stuck that in my heart. And I was talking, and I went, and I made a visit. I went into the chapel, and I prayed, and I asked God. I said, Lord... Please give me the grace to found the legionaries of Christ in the Philippines. And then, you know, I prayed about it. I forgot about it. And, you know, that 11 years later, I was finally ordained a priest. I got sent to the Philippines, <laughs> my very first mission. And I was in the Philippines like four or five years, and I'd completely forgotten about that. And one day when I was in the chapel praying, I was just making a visit to Jesus, and all of a sudden, it, it's like I had a flashback, kind of like in Ratatouille. Did you ever see the movie Ratatouille? Yes. You remember the scene when the guy takes the first bite and he remembers his childhood? It's like, it's just like mom used to make. He's like, oh, I had one of those. I'm in the chapel, and all of a sudden, I'm praying. He's like, oh my gosh, I prayed for this like 15 years ago. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> and it suddenly occurred to me. God answered my prayer. I didn't even remember saying that prayer. I was there for years, and all of a sudden it just, boom. God made it obvious. The thing you prayed for, I gave you in my time. 
And God, a lot of times, God wants to work that way because when God makes us wait, first of all, it makes us desire the thing more. The longer we have to wait for it, the more we tend to keep asking God, God, please give me this thing. Come on, Lord, please give me the child, like Zechariah. Lord, please give me the child. And then when he finally does give it, it's a bigger deal. If God would have just given Zechariah a child when he was young at an age where he was supposed to have children, it would have been like, okay, that's nice, congratulations. But when you're too old to have children and God works a, an explicit miracle, he's making it evident, I am the one who has done this. And it becomes a bigger gift. And it, we, we're happier about it, even though we had to wait and suffer, we are happier about it when God does something like that. And I think for each one of us, there are things you can pray for right now. You can be in the fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever grade you're in. There are things you can pray for right now, and sometimes it's going to feel like, well, I guess God didn't answer me. That's not true. That's not true. God wants us to grow in patience. But if we are praying for something seriously, and it's a good intention, and we're putting it before God, those prayers are never wasted. So my invitation to all of you is, when there's something important to you, take it to prayer, take it to prayer every day, and write it down, and remember it. Because it might be five years later, it might be ten years later, it might be maybe you forgot about it, but God will never forget. And he always wants to answer the things that we pray for. Now, the Father and the Son...